Okay, so welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing lipoproteins and the transportation of lipid molecules around the bloodstream. Okay, right, uh, so we've now discussed the different types of lipid molecules that we're going to need in uh, our discussion. Okay, what we're now going to move on to is what lipoproteins actually are. So basically, this is the motivation for lipoproteins. Basically, uh, we've seen that these lipid molecules are all extremely uh, hydrophobic, okay? Generally, they have very, very neutral structures which don't interact well with water. So how are we going to get these to be moved around the body, basically? Uh, because they're not going to dissolve in the uh, water of the blood, basically. So, what we do is we create these structures called lipoproteins, which are um, designed to help move lipid molecules around the blood. Okay, so let me show you the structure of these lipoprotein molecules. So basically, uh, what they are, are spheres of lipids, okay? So they're a spherical structure, and basically the surface of the sphere is made by a monolayer of phospholipids. So I've discussed with you what a phospholipid is now. There are many different types of phospholipids, but we can broadly uh, split them into those two classes of phosphoglycerolipids and also sphingomyelins, okay? But there is a nice little picture that pretty much sums them all up which is this picture here, where you have these two uh, long hydrophobic tails, and then you have the polar head represented by this circle here. Okay, so basically, you're going to have a monolayer of these phospholipids, like so. So they'll have their polar head facing outwards, and this is going to interact with the water within the blood, and then they're going to have their hydrophobic tails facing inwards, and these will interact with the lipid molecules which are going to be stored in the center of the lipoprotein here. Okay, right. So, the main phospholipid that is used in lipoprotein uh, phospholipid monolayers, like so, is phosphatidylcholine, which we've discussed is also called uh, lecithin. So, phosphatidylcholine is the main phospholipid that is actually used in this phospholipid monolayer. Okay, so this monolayer of phospholipids is called a phospholipid monolayer, and this basically makes the outer surface of the lipoprotein. Okay, uh, so the reason it's well designed is that we have the hydrophobic tails facing towards the center, where we're going to have the truly hydrophobic lipids, the ones which don't have a polar group at all uh, stored, okay? Whilst the polar groups face out towards the outside where uh, they will be in contact with water. So, this is a uh, phospholipid monolayer here. And I think I'll try and add a little bit of colour on here. So I'll colour in these uh, long hydrophobic tails here in orange, and then we'll have the polar groups, I think, in vivid purple. Okay, right. Uh, so basically, this phospholipid monolayer would make up the complete outer surface of the sphere that is this lipoprotein. Okay, and uh, basically, dotted in among uh, the phospholipids uh, that make up this phospholipid monolayer, you will have special proteins. Okay, so the outer surface isn't just made up of the phospholipid monolayer, you also have proteins suspended within the phospholipid monolayer. And these proteins are called apolipoproteins. Okay, and the reason they're called apolipoproteins is really an apolipoprotein refers to the protein on its own when it isn't within the lipoprotein. So when you just have the protein on its own and it isn't within the whole structure, which is called a lipoprotein, so let me just stress that fact, that the entire ball here is called a lipoprotein because it contains lipid molecules and also protein molecules. Basically, an apolipoprotein refers 
to the proteins that you have within lipoproteins when they're on their own, i.e. when they don't have, uh, well, when they don't, when they're not with the lipid molecules in a lipoprotein. Okay, now you won't just have necessarily one single apolipoprotein in the phospholipid monolayer. As we'll see, some of the smaller lipoproteins will just have a single apolipoprotein, but you can get a huge variation in the size of these things, and the bigger ones will have multiple uh, apolipoproteins within their uh, phospholipid monolayer. Okay, so let me continue the phospholipid monolayer round. Also, What's the purpose of these lipoproteins, fundamentally? It's to move lipid molecules around. So, basically, what we're going to do is we're going to have the other forms of lipid molecules being dissolved in the, well, being suspended in the center of this lipoprotein, basically. Okay? So, you're going to have the triacylglycerol molecules in the center of the lipoprotein, like so. So here is a triacylglycerol molecule, and I'll show its structure like so. So here's the glycerol molecule, and here are the long chain uh, carboxylic acids, which are esterified to the free alcohol groups of that glycerol molecule. So this is a triacylglycerol molecule. Now, which other uh, lipid molecules have we discussed? We've discussed triacylglycerols, we've got the phospholipids here, okay, mainly phosphatidylcholine, because phosphatidylcholine is far more prevalent uh, than the sphingomyelins anyway, okay? And uh, the final things that we need to discuss are cholesterol, okay, and cholesterol esters. So basically, the cholesterol esters have to go in the middle, Okay, they are are completely hydrophobic. They have this really long hydrophobic fatty acid group stuck onto them, and this ring structure here, the steroid structure, is extremely hydrophobic as well. Okay, and basically the cholesterol molecules have these this one shot at being polar. They have this one polar group, which was the alcohol group, whereas the cholesterol esters have used that alcohol group in the formation of um, this ester link here, and now it's much less polar, basically. So cholesterol esters, which are just abbreviated CE here, they have to be in the center of the uh, lipoprotein. Whereas free cholesterol molecules, they do actually have this alcohol group, which is polar, okay? So what they can do is they can get into the phospholipid monolayer. So I'll denote one of them here, okay? So in turquoise here, this represents a free cholesterol molecule. And basically, this one polar group that it has, which is this alcohol group, will point out towards the outside with the rest of the polar heads of the uh, phospholipids. Uh, and the rest of the molecule, uh, which is this hydrophobic steroid structure, will point towards the inward bit. Okay, so basically, free cholesterol molecules can actually uh, join with the phospholipids in this phospholipid monolayer of the lipoprotein. Okay, so basically, this is the structure of a lipoprotein. You have the phospholipid monolayer with these apolipoproteins suspended within the phospholipid monolayer. The main phospholipid that makes up the phospholipid monolayer is lecithin or phosphatidylcholine. Um, you also have dotted around the place free cholesterol molecules in this outer layer. And then on the inside, you have the completely hydrophobic uh, fat molecules. So, for instance, triacylglycerols will be a major component. They are the major component, okay? And then you also have these cholesterol esters that will also be stored in the center of the lipoprotein. And this thing can quite happily uh, move around in the blood because it can interact with the water molecules on the outside and keep all of the uh, lipid molecules safely inside, away from the water molecules. Okay, right. What we now need to discuss is these apolipoproteins and the vast plethora of different apolipoproteins which exist. So let's now move on to the different types of apolipoprotein. Okay, so there is 
many, there, well, there are many different apolipoproteins known, okay? So I'm just going to, at the moment, give you a list of the different types of apolipoproteins, and then we'll see the different uh, types of uh, lipoprotein, and we'll see which uh, of these apolipoproteins are in the different types, and what their functional significance is. Okay, so at the moment it's going to seem like a bit of a list, and it is. So basically, there are three apolipoproteins, uh, protein A's, okay? So these are denoted apo A, so apo stands for apolipoprotein, then we've got A, and then there's apolipoprotein A1, there's apolipoprotein A2, and then there's apolipoprotein uh, 4, Okay, sorry, apolipoprotein A4. Okay, and uh, then we'll move on to the apolipoprotein Bs. So there is apolipoprotein B48, okay, which is going to be very important. Uh, there is apolipoprotein B100, which again is going to be very important. Uh, and those are the apolipoprotein Bs. Then we've got free apolipoprotein Cs called apolipoprotein, whoops, apolipoprotein C1, apolipoprotein C2, apolipoprotein C3, okay, and then finally we've also got uh, an apolipoprotein D and also an apolipoprotein E. So I'll squash these in down here. So there's an apolipoprotein D called apod, and then there's also an apolipoprotein E, just called APOE. So, these are all of the different apolipoproteins which you have, and which can be embedded in the uh, phospholipid monolayers of lipoproteins. Okay, right. Now let's talk about the different types of lipoprotein, and then finally we'll start to move on to the physiology. We'll piece it all together. We started off with just looking at the different components. We've looked at the different lipid molecules, we've looked at the different, well, we've looked at the structure of lipoproteins. We're now about to look at the different types of lipoproteins, and then we'll see how they all um, sort of fit together into a physiological system. Right. Okay, so let's now talk about the different types of lipoproteins. So basically, these are distinguished on their size also their function, and uh, also which apolipoproteins they have. Okay, so we're just going to talk about their size at the moment. We will discuss which apolipoproteins they have when we come to actually see them within the physiological pathway, and then we'll also see their function when we see the physiological pathway. So at the moment, all I want you to get from this is the different sizes of these things. So, chylomicrons are the biggest lipoproteins, okay? Uh, they have a diameter of around uh, 50 to 200 nanometers, okay? So, these are big, big things compared to the other ones, okay? Uh, next up, we have the very low-density lipoproteins, VLDLs, okay? So, this stands for very, that's the V, uh, then we have low, then the D is density, and then lipoprotein. So what does the very low density mean? What, what, what does, what's density about? Well, basically, what this refers to is the ratio between how much protein you have within the lipoprotein and how much lipid you have, okay? So if you're building a lipoprotein, okay, so let me get my picture back. I have put one little apolipoprotein in my phospholipid monolayer, and I've got a huge number of phospholipids, basically. Okay, so this is a very, well, this has a very low density, basically, because I've got very little protein compared to how much lipid I've got. If instead I had absolutely loads of lipids and hardly any, actual, sorry, if instead I had absolutely loads of proteins and very little lipid, that would be a high-density lipoprotein because it would have a high density of protein. So it refers to what is the density of the apolipoprotein 
proteins within the lipid, basically. What is the ratio between the protein component of the lipoproteins and the lipid component? Okay, so very low density lipoproteins basically have a lot of lipid and not much protein. Okay, and those are the second biggest uh, lipoproteins with diameters ranging from 28 to 70 nanometers. Okay, so even that looks big compared to what we're going to see, which are the high density lipoproteins, which are tiny. Okay, next up we have LDL. Okay, and this stands just for low density lipoprotein. And when we come to view the physiology, we'll see the connection between VLDL and low-density lipoprotein, LDL. Okay, so low-density lipoprotein. Now, these things are smaller again, okay, and basically what we'll see is that they are basically the VLDLs, once they have given away all of their lipids, okay, well, all their triacylglycerols, but we'll come back to that later. So we get LDL from VLDL. So they should be smaller than VLDL because they are basically VLDL once VLDL has emptied. Okay, so these have a diameter of between 20 and 25 nanometers. And then finally, HDL, which doesn't really fit into the pathways we're about to discuss, it's going to be the very last thing we come to, and it sort of stands on its own. It's basically what cleans up after everything else, okay? And it stands for high-density lipoproteins. And that means that you have a very high ratio of protein uh, relative to lipids. Okay, so high-density lipoproteins. And basically, these are the smallest of all of the lipoproteins, with diameters between 8 and 11 nanometers. Okay, right. So, that's an introduction to the lipoproteins, the different apolipoproteins, and the different types of lipoprotein. At the moment, all I've told you about these different forms is their size. Okay, what we will come on to is their function and also uh, which apolipoproteins they have embedded within that phospholipid monolayer. Okay, so we'll call it there for this video and we'll begin a discussion of the physiological pathways in the next video.